Hey everyone, welcome back to Playing Quietly. My name is Ryan, and today I'm bringing you another Remnant 2 video. Today we're going to be talking about the most recent December 7th patch notes for Remnant 2 The Awakened King. We're going to see if we are going to get some of the adjustments that we've been waiting for. Um, I can tell you that just doing some playtesting today, I don't think we're going to be getting exactly what we wanted, but we'll take a look here. So first up, we have some performance and crash fixes. So our first fix of the day, we fixed an issue where some players were not able to load up their saves after equipping items from the Awakened King DLC. Fixed various crashes related to the Awakened King DLC. This next one is a pretty big one as someone who has played the Ritualist pretty extensively. I definitely noticed this one. They fixed the issue where the Ritualist Vile was destroying nearby breakables and impacting performance and possibly crashing the game. I never experienced an outright crash from this, but I definitely saw some huge performance dips. And finally, they fixed an issue where rapidly switching loadouts could potentially crash the game. On to some quality of life fixes here. We see that they increased the spawn chance of the knights who dropped the crimson coins for the Red Prince dungeon. That is a huge one. I swear I probably spent about an hour trying to get all the coins to drop when I uh, was unlocking the armor set. So that's def definitely going to be a really positive change. They have updated the traf trapper affix so it no longer applies to mini bosses. And then a dev note here says the sunken witch on apocalypse difficulty can still potentially receive the trapper affix. What can we say other than she's a sadistic witch? And finally, they did an overall balance pass on the trapper affix. In UI, they have added summon damage and wind up time to advanced stats. Next up, we have a few bug fixes here. Under uh, progression and rewards, we see that they fixed an issue where defeating the one true king was not counting towards the world boss kill count for the weapon reward unlocks. They also fixed an issue where the Awakened King achievements would not fire off correctly for some players. And finally, it says we have a dev note here. Players who previously completed the prerequisites required for gaining these achievements need to touch the world stone in their world to retroactively retrieve them. Next up, we have our archetype fixes. First up, we have the challenger. They fixed an issue where the close quarters perk was testing against where mod was equipped as opposed to the player's current location. Then we have the ritualist, the big one. They fixed an issue where the eruption visual effect was unaffected by the amplitude trait and they fixed an issue where death wish was taking armor values into account so nothing really with the dots so far next up we have archon they fixed an issue where archon lightning could hit friendlies under certain conditions they fixed an issue where havoc form was not being affected by movement speed modifiers and finally, they fixed an issue where Havoc Form was not aiming correctly for clients. Gunslinger only got one fix. They fixed an issue where Quick Draw was not consuming the ability's charge. Summoner, they fixed an issue where Root Flyers would occasionally kill themselves during flight on the Shahala fight. And they fixed an issue where the Summoner's archetype skill would go into cooldown despite having charges remaining. Gear and items, this one's quite long. First up, they fixed an issue where the Monarch's damage was scaling incorrectly. They fixed an issue where the players could acquire the Ragged Poppet Ingram more than once. They fixed an issue where Ring of Spears mod could be used while in Havoc form. Fixed an issue where Monarch did not require mod power for activation of its mods. Fixed an issue where weight of 75 would switch between being considered heavy or medium when equipping and unequipping items. Fixed an issue where energy wall prevented users from hitting weak spots when using plasma cutter or deceit weapons. 
fixed an issue where rusted bulwark buffs were lost when interacting with a checkpoint while wearing a restriction cord. Fixed an issue where anguish mod damage didn't increase with weapons level up. Fixed an issue where eulogy mod dealt no damage to mother mind when activated. Fixed an issue where dervish mutator buff wasn't refreshing when a skill was used before it expired. Fixed an issue where burden of the warlock was not draining to correct amounts of health. Fixed an issue where players were unable to activate Fortune Hunter while Monarch was equipped. Fixed an issue where Hyperconductor allowed players to activate skill, then remove it with no penalty. Fixed an issue where Meridian was dealing damage based on the distance of the player when explosion happened, not when it was fired. Fixed an issue where Misfortune's level 10 slow effect failed to be applied when equipped on the Ritualist Scythe. Fixed an issue where the Plasma Cutter inflicted damage on the Very Good Boy when shooting over him. Fixed an issue where the Abyssal Hook was not working correctly with some mutators. Fixed an issue where concoctions applied while using Brewmaster's Cork did not persist through death. Fixed an issue where Generating Band was not regenerating based on the correct amount of health. Fixed an issue where Elixir of Life did not benefit from triage or healing effectiveness relic fragments. Fixed an issue where Harmonizer's level 10 benefit was not working. Fixed an issue where Feedback Base and level 10 benefits were not working. Fixed an issue where Shield Breaker was not being generated correctly in some circumstances. Fixed an issue where Blessed Ring did not work with Tranquil Heart. Fixed an issue where Floating Mutator was spawning when equipping the Tainted Blade Mutator. That explains in my uh, recent build video, or not build video, in my recent uh, Save Guardian video, what the hell that little uh, flying thing was. Good to know. Fixed an issue where the level 9 untouchable trait value should have been 27 and not 26%. Fixed an issue where the overflow mod would refresh its own overload application. Fixed an issue where the Tomb Dweller's Ring handled gray health conversion incorrectly. Fixed an issue where Planeswalker's screen effect blinked if activated while running. Fixed an issue where fire debuff could potentially linger on players with zero seconds remaining. Fixed an issue where feedback mutator level 10 ability was not getting triggered by Merciless. Fixed an issue where Stonebreaker's fault line stamina cost was inconsistent. Fixed an issue where Hexahedron was missing texture while inspecting for some other players. Fixed an issue where Wrathbringer was missing effects trails. Fixed an issue where when corrosive status effect was purged from players, it applied overload to nearby enemies instead of corrosive. Fixed an issue where Edgelord Mutator failed to increase melee charge speed for throwing weapons. Fixed an issue where Blood Draw mod was doing more damage than was intended. Fixed an issue where Dried Clade Ring was showing up too large in World prior to being picked up. Fixed an issue where Blood Jewel was not being correctly affected by Affliction Trait. Fixed an issue where the incorrect result was occurring after receiving the death soaked idol. Fixed an issue where miasma displayed the incorrect range and duration. Fixed an issue where Big Bang mod did not increase spirit healer mutator healing when using more charges. Fixed an issue where top heavy mutator failed to increase Enigma's range damage. Fixed an issue where chaos driver mod did not do increased weak spot damage. Fixed an issue where smolder's sprinting attack did not deal fire damage. Fixed an issue where sequence shot was not reducing charge time for subsequent shots. Fixed an issue where sparkfire shotgun was not playing visual or sound effects correctly. Fixed an issue where Savior Shatter Shard's damage was not affected by the kinship trait. Fixed an issue where Ritualist Scythe was not consuming stamina on charged attacks. Fixed an issue where Quick Draw would not exit Shroud. Fixed an issue where Creeping Mist could be self-applied if revived after using it. Fixed an issue where Ghost Shell Mutator didn't work with Monarch. Fixed an issue where Affliction increased the shock damage of the Krell Edge. Fixed an issue where Impact Cannon Shots were missing projectile VFX when held. Alright, that does it for the items. Now we have some fixes to the enemies. We fixed an issue where Bruin Blade of the King's spears would insta-kill 
Companions. Fixed an issue where companions would attack Fey in stone form in the Forlorn Coast. Fixed an issue where the Red Prince's voice was very low when asking him specific questions. Fixed an issue where the Primogenitor boss would remove concoction buffs on occasion. Fixed an issue where explosions caused by Gwendolyn the unburnt bombs were not visible for clients. Fixed an issue where the sunken witch could get stuck on the overhead walkways. Fixed an issue where the one true king was only getting one affix on apocalypse difficulty. Fixed an issue where knights were dealing more than the intended amount of damage against the one true king. Fixed an issue where the labyrinth sphere didn't play its death animation when dying to burnt damage. Fixed an issue where the mangled toner's health would potentially disappear mid-fight. Fix an issue where aberrations with cloner affects could potentially spawn a clone after they died. And fix an issue where Dran Immolator's interactive was incorrectly killing players on Apocalypse difficulty. We got a few more UI fixes here. They fixed an issue where there was a typo in the description text for Monarch. Fixed an issue where clients would see an incorrect amount of health on Bone Harvester's health bar during encounters. Fixed an issue where there was a grammatical mistake in the description uh, for Constrained Heart. Fixed an issue where there was a grammatical mistake in the description of Atonement Fold. Fixed an issue where the misplaced memoir was labeled incorrectly on pickup preview text. Fix an issue where Ring of Omens description value was displayed incorrectly. Fix an issue where there was a grammatical mistake in the description of Dran's dream item. Fix an issue where the description for Atari Booster did not specifically state it was only intended for range damage, not melee. Fix an issue where the health bar for Little George would sometimes not display. And finally, to wrap things up, we have a few miscellaneous fixes. Fixed various issues where players could get stuck or get out of level in the Forlorn Coast area. Fixed various issues with the foliage in the Forlorn Coast. Fixed various visual issues in the Forlorn Coast area. Fixed an issue where Dumbwaiter in Ravenous Siege would not open after Siege was completed. Fixed an issue where food in Ravenous Siege would respawn after resting at a World Stone after the Siege. Fixed an issue where the client would see visual effects for Kill Switch Mutator if the host had it equipped near the gate area of the blackened cathedral after Clementine destroyed it. Fixed an issue where players did not have the option to select I bring news dialogue from conversation with Laywise if they met Nimue. Fixed an issue where players could interact with Laywise through the ground. Fixed an issue where visual effects were invisible on Nebula if the weapon was occluded. Fixed an issue where Misty Step Neutral Dodge would spawn Trapper AoEs. Fixed an issue where bone piles in Harvester's Reach weren't displaying as broken for clients who joined after they were destroyed. Fixed an issue where Laywise would replay his crafting dialogue intro after defeating the one true king and experiencing the true ending. Fix an issue where Nightweaver Spider Crawl sound effect would continuously loop. Fix an issue where Penitent's Wall Shield sound would continuously loop sometimes. Fix an issue where players could still walk around when getting killed by the explosive arrow shot from the Shrewd. Fix an issue where the body of the dead ritualist would call out when looking at it. Fix an issue where Nimue's heart and crown would continuously glow after her death for clients. Fix various issues with visual effects related to the One True King. Fix an issue where one of the One True King's taunt subtitles had a misspelling. And finally, fix an issue where if players were attacked while traveling through a portal, it could cause them to go flying. All right, guys, so that does it for the patch notes. We didn't see some of the things that we were hoping for, such as maybe some adjustments to the way dots worked, or even some of the more meaningful adjustments to the ritualist abilities, or some of the items that we wanted to see. Uh, it seems like more of a maintenance patch than it was overhauling anything. But I can definitely say through a lot of the playtesting that I did on one of my more recent builds, there have been some more behind the scenes changes and uh, we'll keep looking out on the forums to see if anyone else has spotted those. But that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining us. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, even though it was a little bit boring, uh, hopefully I have earned your subscription. 
And don't forget to check back for more Remnant 2 content. But until then, we'll see you guys next time. Have yourselves a good one.